Welcome to another installment of Test Chamber. I'm Matt Miller. I am joined by Wade Wojcik. Miller, can I tell you how excited I am right now? I am also really excited. We are both pretty huge Halo enthusiasts. I am resisting the urge of jumping over the table and clawing the controller out of your hands for this exciting journey. Well, it's uh, it's pretty cool. We've got Halo 5 in hand right now. We're about to dive into the first mission, play the first couple missions, yeah, actually. Yeah, the first three. Um, and, uh, and get a sense for what's going on with the new Halo. Let's, let's dive right in, huh? Let's do it. And we already saw a good portion of this first scene on YouTube. Uh, you avoided the spoilers. Yeah, I yeah. mean, whatever spoilers there were in the first little cinematic. But Well, this is a, a pretty amazing opening cinematic. Starts out a little slow with a little bit of a sort of story teasing. Yeah, which we'll see in a minute. Um, I haven't seen all this stuff yet, but um, we, are I, we playing on normal the beginning. Yeah, which is, I, I think, <laughs> I think wise when you're trying yes. to like talk and communicate exactly. uh, as you're playing. Okay, here we go. So we were talking the other day that we don't really know when this moment. I love this right here. Yeah. That journal. Oh, it's so cool. It's the, uh, that came with Halo Reach if you got the the collector's edition. Yeah, right. We don't really know when this moment is in time necessarily. Right. It, it seems like it's an older moment, but she sounds so much older than she did in Reach. So I'm guessing it's... She does, but we know something has hap happened to her at the end of Spartan Ops. Yes. Um... Where in, she, uh, in terms of what happens with her arm, yes. So it has to be before that, right? So maybe she's just reminiscing and then voiceovering like a memory of hers. It does seem that way because there, obviously, Cortana is alive, and uh, she's sending her off seemingly to Noble Six because that's the same canister that he carries to the Pillar of Autumn. Right. And here we are on the Pelican, introducing our our new team. Yeah, our our. Other four Spartans will be playing. Yeah, for those who haven't been following along too much about pre-coverage, there's basically two groups of four Spartans mm -hmm. in Halo 5. Uh, one is is at least in part familiar, uh, and one is made up of, of entirely new Spartans. Yes, and sometimes characters we know. From what I gathered from our uh, our coverage of Halo 5 back earlier this year, everyone loves the fact that Buck, right there. Yeah, yeah. Buck is back, and he looks much better in this game than he did in ODST. Yeah. All of these, all four of these characters, even though they're 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 newly made Spartans, newly made Spartan fours, mm -hmm. they are all characters that were introduced in various branches of the Halo fiction. Yeah. So Tanaka, uh, we've seen her in Halo Escalation, the comics. Yep. We got Locke, who is our kind of leader of the squad. He showed up in in Nightfall as an Oni agent. Mm -hmm. Um, we had have Vale, um, who was once sort of like I think like an engineer. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know too much about her backstory. And uh, and obviously we've got Buck from from ODST, but they they are all characters that um, have previously showed up in in the novels, the comics. Yes. Uh, the live action series. And uh, Locke just depressurized the whole Pelican, so they fly <laughs> so out the back. <laughs> they'll just die. Yeah. That's the end of the game. Thanks, yeah. everybody. <laughs> um, and then uh, when I was talking with the writer of this game, uh, Brian Reed, he said that, you know, it's said of. Oh, it's so cool. He said of uh, Spartan Buck, or when he was an ODST, if he was any better, he'd be a Spartan. Looks like he got better. Yeah. Well, they, they went through, like, the augmentation process and everything, which is probably not a super comfortable experience. They did do. I didn't know they did augmentation. Yeah, I, I believe that. Okay. That the implication is that they the implication. they well, did go through that stuff. They addressed some of that stuff in in some of the expanded fiction. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what uh, Frank O'Connor mentioned in a follow up interview was that these uh, these Gen two suits that they're wearing are more advanced than Blue Team, more advanced than Master Chief's armor. Right. They have more fancier onboard computers, and uh, if it was. Osiris versus, you know, blue team. Without the suits, then blue team would destroy them. Can we just stop for a second and talk about <laughs> how amazing this scene is? One is it's like one unbroken shot, right? That it, follows them. It certainly it, you have to figure it was at least in part inspired by those uh, some of those great scenes from the recent two Avengers movies. Oh yeah. Uh, this is the, totally like an Avengers shot right it here. It is. It really is. And I think that's purposeful. Yep. They want to establish these new characters really as, as superhero soldiers. Yes. And you've got a couple of Hulk smashes even. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. And it looks like the Covenant is fighting um, uh, a forerunner, Promethean, 
army here. Yeah, I, I mean, this does sort of throw you right into the deep end. You don't know exactly what's going on other than that we're going out to retrieve uh, Halsey, yes. who, if anybody remembers in Halo 4, I know it's been a long time, but Catherine Halsey, the guy, the, the, the character who kind of was the mother to the Spartans, right? Yes. The Master Chief. She, she was sort of the founder of that program in a lot of ways. And we're in! Yeah. <laughs> she, uh, she kind of... Uh, turned traitor, or at least it seemed like she did, right. and joined up with Imdama, who is kind of this uh, sort of terrorist covenant leader. Yep. The leader of the Hand of the Didact. So after the Didact uh, was taken out at the end of Halo 4, uh, they basically took up his purpose on Requiem and did some form of you know the covenant thing of trying to usher in a great journey of sorts. And right. if you look to your left... Which I say, so you got a bunch of Phaetons, the Forerunner ships, they're red, yeah, fighting uh, some Banshees. It's pretty awesome. Uh, and you got some, uh, those like laser things are shooting out of those uh, Promethean turret things that you had to take out in Halo 4 on yeah. that mammoth mission. I mean, Halo 5 is interesting from what I've seen of it so far in terms of like, they've almost moved away from just set piece moments and just to have, have everything as a set, like, Every moment yeah. is built to be this sort of like crazy set piece. I mean, you could just sit here and watch this battle and be like, this is amazing. It's really cool. Uh, um, and then you got a nice skybox there as well. Absolutely. They always, always do some right there cool stuff with the skybox. One thing that's really cool, we're not playing co-op uh, because the network, the online functionality is disabled for, for, for a little for while anyway. Being. But uh, they really encourage you through the play style to command your troops around. Yeah. And so if you hit, yeah, so like up that. on your D-pad, you command your troops to attack. Uh, Here, I'll just leave them to work on that ground yeah, a little bit. Yeah, they're, they're a little bit behind you. They may just be, it, because it's early in the game here, they may be, the game is wanting me to take rush forward, maybe. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, it is on normal, after all. <laughs> you know, the, the other thing I wanted to note, though, before we get too far away from the opening cinematic, is not only is that opening really cool, it's sort of representative of, a, of what I think is the most significant shift in gameplay style for this game. Yeah. Which is that everything is meant to be really fast and really motion-driven and really about like constantly changing weapons. There's always weapons around to pick up, but mm -hmm. there's not necessarily a lot of ammo for any one. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot more engagement in close quarters melee. Um, and seemingly, you know, endless variety of when you can use your Spartan abilities and how. Yes, absolutely. Uh, when, we, when the beta came out, I was a big fan of the fact that everyone has the same Spartan abilities. It's just a matter of how you use them and how skilled you are with uh, you know, the uh, loadout that everyone has, the abilities. Those guys are cool. Yeah, you, you're you going to see here, we've got the, the new kind of mantle option. Um, I just kind of climbed up the edge of that cliff. Oh, yeah, the, um, the, the, the scamp, scamper? Something like that. Scamper. You do uh, stuff like that where you're just like, yeah. I just, I'm going to bust <laughs> through this wall. Yeah, so when, uh, the, the, I think it was the GameSpot promo where Locke was basically coming in and busting a bunch of ass. Yeah. And it said, pre-order pre and get the exclusive armor. Uh, Locke was doing a bunch of that stuff. He was busting through walls and all that. And initially I thought, are you going to be able to really do some of that? Apparently you are. Absolutely. Uh, it is, I, I haven't played uh, too much yet of the game, but... For me, the most notable thing is the sense of speed. What what at first I think some players are gonna sense as being almost like floatiness, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it's floaty. The control is pretty tight. It's just that um, you, it's almost like you're kind of like uh, there's very little friction. There, yeah, there's this implication that your your Spartan can kind of just move through and past anything. Well, he's an unstoppable killing force, basically. He is, yeah. Which I think, you know, I don't know if you tried the other difficulties, but normal is designed to have that kind of yeah. flow. I think so. And and in some ways, even like when I normally start a new Halo game, I often start on heroic. And oh, I yeah. think in some ways I might, on my very first playthrough, I might go through on normal just to maximize that sense of speed sure. and and kind of the insanity of, of, of movement. Um, yeah, I think um, that's so cool, right? Like the <laughs> charge up to dudes. Oh, uh, yeah. If you haven't done your ground pound yet, yeah, we should do that. I don't know if there's anyone you can use it on. That's down below yet. 
We'll look uh, when I get over here. Another cool feature uh, that Team Osiris has that Blue Team does not is the Artemis tracking system. I think that's down on the D-pad, and it does this kind of scan of the environment to not only show you ah cool. Yeah, there we not go. Not only show you uh, you know your objective, but also I think if, if there's any points of interest around, I think if you did it right now, it would just show you your objective. Yeah, yeah. I know that uh, having played a little bit into this game bef before we did this test chamber, not very far, I think you do still have that track. You do have the ability to um, to track your objectives as blue team. Yes, uh, uh, you do. And also, but maybe um, it doesn't pick up some of the other things. I, I guess I don't know yet for yeah, sure. Yeah, I haven't seen this yet, but when we were on our cover trip, 343 told us that uh, you can use the Artemis tracking system as Team Osiris to find alternate routes throughout the level. Right. Uh, Whereas Blue Team doesn't have that ability. And I think uh, it's just to highlight different play styles. Uh, one, of the, one of the features that they showed us on our, on our test level, which I think was level two Blue Team, was how you have the ability to approach each encounter a little differently. You know, you can find different hull. It's, it reminded me of Deus Ex almost, where you can go in the front guns blazing, try and right. find a side route, and maybe stealthily take out some guys. Come on, Buck, keep up. <laughs> good work, Evan. All right, good team leader. I noticed in the briefing Dr. Halsey lost her left arm. When did that happen? Jewel did it. No idea when or why. Well, <laughs> that's a little bit of a <laughs> fiction. <laughs> yeah. Technically, Sarah Palmer shot uh, Catherine Halsey in, yes. a, in a attempt to execute her. And, and Jewel amputated the, the arm to right. save her. Might be a way to override this door. This oh, that's where I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> you played this before, right? I did. Yeah. I'm just being dumb. Yeah. Uh, there we go. That's the Artemis. This should do it. Kind of Buzz Lightyear. -y. Yeah, it is sort of Buzz Lightyear. -y. <laughs> and so this is the uh, Promethean suppressor that you have right now. Yeah, right off the bat at the beginning of this game, they're really throwing a lot of weapons at you. Doors it's open. once again kind of com communicating that sense of, um, I don't know, like the speed uh, with which it's it's wanting you to approach things and this sort of frenetic quality of changing weapons and always having these slightly different experiences Kraken. as you move. The hell is the Kraken? Yeah, that thing looks like trouble. It's gone now, but... <laughs> <laughs> Basically like a giant more of it. scarab death machine. It is. So yeah, Vale can speak the elite language. So yeah, Vale is sort of a genius. That's a established Whoa, there it is. other fiction. Yeah. Holy crap, look at that. That's a big thing. I can probably take that down, right? <laughs> Just, you know, flip it on its stomach and attack its weak point for massive damage. That's right. I mean, <laughs> its belly is exposed right now. Uh, Sorry, dark, uh, we just got through with our Dark Souls playthrough, and Dantex said that every episode. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, I haven't yet Check figured out... the new plasma pistol sound. Oh, wow. What happens... Uh, what does it sound like when you charge it up? I'll show you in a second here. I'll find a good guy. Noob combo him. Oh. That was How easy. Like that? <laughs> I'm still a big fan of what's known as the noob combo, where you hit someone with a charged plasma pistol and then switch over to a BR and cap them in the head quick. Yeah. That's from Halo 2. Uh, so what does the Kraken do exactly? Is it like an ex excavation vehicle? I, you know, I'm not sure. I, I think the implication is that right now we're seeing the uh, Prometheans in a, in a confrontation with uh, Imdama's Covenant. Yeah, which is interesting because you thought they were, I thought they were on the same side, at least in Halo 4. Maybe some, they had a falling out. Oh, secret, secret area. Is there a loot, loot chest? <laughs> no. I don't see anything in here. What about above you? Oh, that's a good thought. Uh, not a whole lot. Maybe you, oh, there you go. There you go. So this is like maybe a better vantage point. It's like a suppressor there. Or Light rifle. We're just gonna run along here yeah. a little bit, see what we find. It's a little experiment. And so they, oh yeah, you could definitely do a nice ground pound. That's a good idea. Oh, <laughs> they, um, they got out of the way. So if you played the, if you played the Halo Five beta, the ground pound was activated by clicking in the right, uh, the red sti the analog stick, which to me is much more cumbersome than what they changed it to, which is now the melee button. Right. Which is a lot. Which is a good design choice. 
Uh, I haven't seen any Promethean Knights yet. Just the soldiers have been the main attack force. Yeah, we're going to see some of those. Keep moving so. toward all these positions. Oh, oh no. all right. So you're down. I did that on purpose, yeah. clearly, so I yeah. can show off the revive so you, system. You hit X and your teammate comes by, which I think is great. It's it's a nice way to keep the action flowing, like it I said, is. keep that sense of movement. A lot it's, of times, it's not a guaranteed thing. Right? Yeah. If they can't reach you, then you just have to die and go back yeah. to your last checkpoint. But uh, it's a really cool feature, especially when the difficulty gets ramped up later on. Oh, also, uh, I guess we should say that one thing they told us uh, on the trip was. The cover story trip was when you play with uh, co-op with other other people that fill in for these Spartans, the difficulty gets ramped up accordingly. So, you know, if you're worried about playing on Legendary and it being a little too easy with four people, it does get more difficult. Also, well, there's skulls. That's just what we need, is Legendary to be more difficult. <laughs> right, and uh, also with the skulls. It's, what's awesome is they've gone back to the what they did in Halo 3, and I think Halo 2 as well, and they've hidden skulls on the maps. So no longer are you able to activate the skulls from the get-go. You have to find the skulls in the map and then activate them later for achievements. Oh, oh. what's that about? He just dodged you. I guess. <laughs> uh, I was a big fan of that in Halo 3 where you had to find the skulls, and looks like they brought that back, which I'm a huge fan of. And gotta love that... I mean just that, look at mobility of just yeah. getting around the board. It's really cool. Um, that's something that, like, I think would have been really challenging to do in a previous Halo game. Definitely. Yeah, I love the uh, the clamber. That's what I was looking for, the, the clamber ability. Um, especially, you know, when you're in matchmaking, it just keeps the flow of motion so quick. Oh, they turned on him. Okay. is an opportunist, not a leader. It was only a matter of time until his version of the Covenant started to break. Well, it could stand to break a little faster if you ask me. I think one of the things that's that's we, we alluded to this a little bit when we were talking about the characters earlier, but one of the things about Halo 5 that's striking is that this seems to me that, uh, to be the game where they are... They're really embracing all the other elements of the Halo fiction. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're not being afraid. I think there's always been a fear before of like putting something in that the broader base of players isn't going to understand where it came from. Like, oh, what if they didn't play Spartan Ops from Halo yeah. 4? What if they didn't read the Escalation comic? And what I've seen so far of this isn't necessarily like a requirement that you, you know all that stuff, but simply that... Um, they're not afraid to include those things. Mm -hmm, which I think is great. I, I agree. I, that said, I, I think it's fair to say that both you and I are engaged with that expanded <laughs> fiction sure. a little bit. And so um, I'll be interested to hear what that feedback is from the broader player base that maybe is... Yeah. Not so engaged Yeah, with that definitely. Fiction. I know that Kyle uh, here at Game Informer, he doesn't look at any of the expanded fiction, doesn't read the books. Uh, he just plays the games, and that's enough for him. So I'm curious to see what his viewpoint is. Absolutely. So we got some knights here, finally. Knights were such a cool enemy in Halo 4. Uh, there's so, like, there, there's, I think, four different types or so. And. Uh, they're just so threatening sometimes, especially the, the close combat one that does that little, I think that's the close combat one with the shotgun. He does that little blink ability where he like quick like jumps up to where you are and just hits you with his sword. Um, obviously we're playing a normal, if you're playing I think more, diffi on diff more difficult mode, he'd just annihilate us. Yeah. Come on Buck, <laughs> he says I'm taking it down as he runs away. Uh, of course you could tell him to take it down, you could order him. We move on Halsey and Jewel. Yeah. Here we go. Moving forward. Yeah, the clamber ability is just so great. I also really like the uh, the thrust ability. Yeah. For getting out of a zone real quick. Absolutely. We'll, we'll talk about that when we get into our next playable area. I've got some story stuff going. By the way, if you don't want any real spoilers, this is probably the time to jump okay. ship. So yeah, if you uh, enjoyed this, no one spoilers. That was it was fun. This, this Thanks for watching. Be some things going down right now <laughs> for the rest of you. Stay on board. We're gonna see some cool stuff. So you have learned something from the Jews. You claim to be able to access. And I can. However, I did not claim to be able to access it instantaneously. Seems 
Your fingers are an open rebellion, Han. Enough! Yeah, good looking. <laughs> Eyes on target. This location does not serve my needs. When she makes another transmission, I must triangulate. I tire of this doctor. Presumably, she's talking about the librarian, mm -hmm. the didact's wife, an ancient forerunner. Yeah! Bust in! Too bad you can't play this right now. I know. Although, it is cool that if we were playing this scene, you would have a lot of these same abilities. To just kind yeah. of like be really mo smashing into enemies and. Yep. You can do that, you know, duck you slide. Can do the slide, yep. Take him out! Yeah! Assassination. Dr. Halsey, Captain Lasky would like a word with you. <laughs> You're in trouble. I, I actually really love the way they've established Halsey as this very complex character who you really don't know what side she's yes, on. Yes. You know that she's sort of like is really protective of her original Spartan 2s, mm -hmm. including Master Chief. Mm -hmm. And that drives a lot of her actions. But like when she betrays uh, the UNSC and works with Imdama, you don't know really if she's still working for the UNSC yeah, yeah. or if she's just like... It might be that she's recognized that this is what she has to do to keep humanity alive mm -hmm. and to have them inherit the mantle, as they talk about. Yeah, the idea that the Forerunners have left behind this mantle of responsibility for the galaxy, mm -hmm. for the, for humanity. And that, yeah, that, that may be her goal. That's another part of the expanded fiction that I really like, the, the I mantle. I position three weeks ago. I told you this was happening. We'll discuss oh. that in private, Dr. Palmer. What has she done? Palmer's huge. I know. <laughs> Good work, Osiris. What do you think that's about? <laughs> so it looks like... Uh, Locke is a man of few words. Yeah. <laughs> He's like a Schwarzenegger type. He is. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. I, just one thing about the mantle. Uh, the Forerunners back in the, the... Okay. I'll get back to that later. This is important. Yeah. We're seeing, seeing the return of our old hero here. And no Cortana in the back of his head. Mm-hmm. Reminds me of the very first Halo 5 tease we got when uh, Master Chief is walking through the desert. Yeah. And he holds Cortana's chip in his hand. I haven't seen Chief press himself like this since we were in boot camp. He's fine, Fred. This many missions nonstop isn't fun. Fred, Kelly, and Linda. Blue team. Yeah, so these are also characters established in the expanded fiction that, we've, that we're seeing introduced yep. really into the gameplay in a really cool way. I mean... We've always there's always been the sense that Master Chief was like the last of the Spartan twos, mm -hmm. but he's never been. There's always been these other Spartan twos, yeah. but oftentimes they're off on other missions or they're at one point they're trapped on this like shield world mm -hmm. where Halsey kind of kidnaps them yeah. effectively, yeah. and they're out of out of action for a, a long period of time. Um, which is, by the way, one of the reasons Halsey gets in trouble. Yep. Initially. Yep. Uh, and But it was funny is if you read the instruction booklet of Halo Combat Evolved, the yep. first Halo game, it says you're the last of your kind. Right, yeah. So Which, that, they, they maybe sort of retroactively changed right. that. Uh, we're going to get some awesome outer space scenes yes. here for a moment. But um, this scene is so badass. I love cool. the original Halo theme in this so much yeah, and how it mirrors the, the opening of the game. Absolutely. It's really cool. I mean, these character, these other three characters are as close as you can get uh, for for Master Chief for John's uh, family. They're like yep. his brothers and sisters, and they're the last ones left, right? Yeah. They're mo almost all the Spartan twos have fallen in. Look battle. at how perfectly in sync they are. I know. They're such a well-trained team. Look at that. Osiris is a cool team, but they're just like in each other's heads. Yes, these guys basically grew up together. They were found when they were like six years old and entered training. Oh, it's so cool! <laughs> and they lock their, their armor. Love it. Love that opening. And each of them sort of have their specialties on, on the squad. And, yep. Um, and now we're playing as Master Chief. And it looks like playing as Master Chief, right? You got yeah. the old kind of assault rifle He's look. got his classic assault rifle. That said, 
Uh, he does still have a lot of the other uh, special abilities mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so what happens if you hit uh, down on the D-pad? Okay, so it shows you the objective, but not anything else. Yeah. Um, you, I want to talk about something you brought up at the end of the last mission, which is this move. Yeah, yeah. So if you tap B, um, there is a sort of a cool down. I can't constantly do it, but it's basically kind of triggering your little jet pack. Yeah. And it becomes this great little dodge maneuver. You can see up in the upper right, uh, that little red exclamation mark. Yep, yep. That's telling me I can't use it right now. But in terms of closing distance with a target really fast when you're sprinting, um, like as I sprint, watch this. See, like that's like that just, last little bit that's yep. gonna rush me forward. Just a little boost. Um, yeah, it's it's great, and I know uh, that it's kind of um, reminiscent of a, of an armor ability in Halo Four. There was a little dodge you could equip, but I think this is much more effective. That in, that went into third person. It was felt kind of weird. Well, I think in some ways it seems like what they've done is taken some of the things that were, oh, you can have one of these or another of these things. On your, on your Spartan, and you just now have all of that stuff yeah, on your yeah, Spartan. Yeah. You have a sprint, you have a dodge, you have a slam. Let's see if I can pull this off. <laughs> <laughs> I love that they brought back the grunts, you know, doing their banter. Yes. Uh, that's great. <laughs> that's one thing I've missed, is uh, the grunts just, you know, being grunts. Yeah. Miller, what do you think about the uh, the zoomed-in optics of each gun? The I, fact that it's here in Halo. Yeah, I mean that's I know that's been an issue for a lot of a lot of fans of whether they wanted to have that. I I think it's an acknowledgement that like first-person shooters on consoles have moved forward since mm -hmm. the original Halo. Yeah. Uh, that there's just a different style of play now, um, and I'm kind of fine with it. Yeah, and I know that uh, there. Are, 343's approach to it was kind of twofold. On the one hand, they said from a from a canon perspective that this sort of thing was always present in the Spartan armor as part of like a, a gun link like interface. But also, uh, just from a technical gameplay perspective, I think they did a really good job because, for one, it doesn't increase your accuracy of the gun. It just it just like uh, you know, zooms it in a bit, but also reduces the sensitivity of your uh, of your aim. So oh, it's take that. it's purely uh, you know a play style a play style <laughs> choice. And so if you don't want to use it, you don't have to, and you can you know stay at the hip firing mode, if you will. Data center is just ahead. I think I got go. those guys. Yeah, you got them. <laughs> got them. Data center. We've got a complete set of data set keys for the station. We should be able to pull down Argent Moon schematics and find a path to central control. That's pretty cool looking. Yeah. This is an old Oni facility. That's right. Floating in an asteroid belt. Yeah, in some ways blue team right in this moment is a little bit out of the uh out of the center of the action, right? We see Team Osiris has really backwards. been tasked with yeah, yeah, right. Has really been tasked with the I don't know, important stuff. Right. Uh, and blue team is kind of off doing its own thing. Oh, I think you got to scan that, oh, that yeah. data center. There we go. Data bank entry accepted. Access the data banks. Grab the data and current population map. Should be a straight shot to central control through the assembly bay ahead. There's still prowlers in the head. So, uh, we also... Got a chance to see Fred and Kelly in uh, Ford Unto Dawn when they were probably 16 years old. Elevator. Did you watch that series, Miller? Uh, yeah, yeah. I thought that was fun. I, um, I think that there's been an evolving effort in recent uh, years for them to step up their expanded fiction game. Mm -hmm. um, I think... There have always been some pretty good novels, um, but some of the other arenas, I don't know, for me, struggled a little bit, to be yeah. honest. Uh, and I think the most recent live-action series, Nightfall, was pretty solid. Um, 
Yeah, he's to... got a, a new Fall of Reach one coming, like an animated series mm-hmm. that's going to be kind of connected to this, that is going to retell that story of the early days of the Spartan 2s, presumably. Yeah, yeah Ford Unto Dawn was, was, was pretty good. Um, yeah. To me, the best Halo live action is going to be ODST's we are, the We Are ODST commercial. Okay. Do you remember that? Oh, uh, so I don't cool. think I do remember that. That one. was a commercial for the ODST game where you know it showed an ODST through training and then going in through a drop. Oh yeah, that was cool. I do remember that now. All right, let's see it. And I guess from you know. A story perspective, it looks looks like even though the prophets are kind of out of the picture here, the elites are still really capable leaders of uh, Covenant forces. Yeah, I mean, within the broader fiction, there's definitely like there's a lot of stuff that's happened with the Covenant, right? They're not even mm-hmm. really a unified group anymore, right? No, no, but it's still just it's like this band of races, alien races, just fighting for control over each other. Yeah. Um. One of the big surprises Bad. for me <laughs> at the beginning of Halo 4 was the fact that you're still fighting the Covenant, but... Uh... I, yeah, I think from a pure gameplay perspective, it would almost not feel like Halo if yeah. they just took oh, the Covenant yeah. out. Definitely. They're, they're, in many ways, they, they are this kind of iconic enemy, not just for what they do, but because in first-person shooting, they established a trend, the idea that you would have these these enemies in a game that each had their, their, these very distinct behaviors and hierarchy yep. and stuff like that, that doesn't seem like such a big deal now. But if you cast back to, you know, 15 years ago, the the sense of um, of having to pay attention to this, this alien hierarchy, oh, that was cool, <laughs> uh, yeah. is a really big deal, you know? Um, at the time, it was a really big deal. Right, yeah. Uh, they did get rid of the Flood. I think a lot of people were okay with that. Yes, the Flood. Well, at least they seem to be gone. Right. We'll see as right. we go through this story if, if we ever ever see the return of the Flood mm-hmm. uh, again. But yeah, but just from a gameplay perspective, I think a lot of people were glad to see them leave. <laughs> see, there should be, yeah, DMR right there. Yeah, I'll take that. So... Like for the DMR, for example, you can shoot it without the scope or with, but the accuracy of the gun is the same. And uh, to me, that was a really good decision uh, to kind of split the difference between people who prefer not to zoom in and just you know do classic Halo and those who, right. you know, want to be a little bit more, I don't know, advanced. <laughs> so let's go. Let's go up along the upper route through here. Yeah, it's all about player choice here, Miller. It is. <laughs> I love the new soundtrack. Yeah, it's really beautiful so far. Um, Somebody's... Yeah, 343 just released their second season of The Sprint, where they show off the game development of this. Uh, And the first episode, I think, was on uh, The Composer and the music. Really good episode. They showed how they recorded all this at Abbey Road Studios in London. Super cool. Yeah, it was great. And then uh, for the choir, for the classic Halo theme, they did it at the Ruta Finnan... uh, Concert hall in Prague, a world famous hall for their acoustics, and oh man, it sounds great. Yeah. So you're doing pretty good so far. You haven't had any down teammates. If you did, then you know you could obviously go up and revive them in a similar way. You got revived earlier. I did. I'm the only one who's really, really <laughs> struggling here. Yeah. I do think for, uh, speaking of somebody who's played all the previous Halo games, um, I think there's going to be a little bit of a phase of adjustment for a lot of people getting used to the new controls. Yeah. Um, Typically, uh, up to this point, you know, grenade has been left trigger. I mean, unless you change that in your settings. Uh, And now it's left bumper. Right. Left trigger is, of course, the scope in. Yeah, and and beyond even the actual button changes, which I think, I don't know, I'm always surprised how quickly I can adjust to a new control paradigm. Uh, You complain about it, and then you just start doing it, and it's like, ah, it's not that big of a deal. (laughs) 
But for me, the bigger change here is just the feel of movement, the speed with which you're kind of making your way around the board. Yeah. Um, that feels very different, um, I think. Um, and the one thing that I, I think, you know, we obviously could be taking more time to explore, but we're just going through to show the level. Yeah. Because I'm sure there are Easter eggs and things to look for. Undoubtedly. Yeah, I, I don't think too many of our viewers would be super interested in seeing us just scour. Yeah. I don't know, maybe there would be. <laughs> but to scour every little corner of right. each little zone. Oh, well, I'm sure everything's going to be just fine up yep, here. Yep, you can make it across this bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we got another little cool story moment here. I'm gonna shut up for this one because it's pretty cool. Blue team, report. Sierra 117 to Blue team, report. Sierra 117, does anyone copy? The domain is open. Meridian is next. Cortana? John, the reclamation is about to begin. on Meridian. Who? Cortana. Whoa, all right. Well, there you go. That's a big story moment. Yeah. Um, how far did you fall? Can you look up? We have a mission to focus on. We can talk about this later. Just, okay. Frederick, get us back on course for central control. That fair and warlike form. Nice. Is the uh, flashlight on a toggle, or is it just on? It's just on right now. Mm. If it is on a toggle, I haven't So a couple it. interesting questions. Uh, is Chief gone crazy? <laughs> <laughs> or uh, what's going on there? I guess we don't know yet. We don't know yet, but uh, there is um, there's definitely the implication that uh, things are maybe not what they at first appear to be yeah. as far as... Uh, Cortana's death at the end of Halo right. 4. And uh, that was about as far as we got to play on the cover story. And uh, yeah, really curious about, you know, the reclamation. Uh, obviously, that's a reoccurring theme in Halo. Meridian, I'm assuming, is a colony. Uh, yeah. Based on what we know so far of the, the story. That's not a place I can go. Or mm. is it? Restricted access. Oh, you found a way around. <laughs> Love it. You just gotta feel bad for these guys. Yeah, I mean, really. I mean, they are not equipped to deal with four Spartans no. coming at them. And they are dying gruesome deaths. Yeah. Some of them suffocating. <laughs> oh. <laughs> at the same time, they don't have a problem, just kamikaze. I guess. Just falling at you. Oh. Elites. Active camouflage. I just want to hear one. Ward, ward, ward. That's all I want. I think they took that out. 
I don't know. I, I bet you there's a little Easter egg in there for us old timers. Yeah. <laughs> I love the way they used to do that little combat roll off to the side when you throw a grenade at them. Well, it turns out active camouflage does not hold up to my shotgun no, for very long. No, surprisingly. Not enough. Meridian. Meridian's a backwater. If she's active, well, so was Cedra. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 another aspect of this kind of family dynamic. Oh! Oh. <laughs> That's normal, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> send in your troops before you help. Oh, you... and the, the other thing is you can send your troops into a spot. In... Okay. Yeah, and so they they're going to run up ahead. Yeah. Have fun up there, guys. <laughs> now, I really like the team dynamic uh, compared to how it was in Halo Reach. Reach was cool because you fought with the team, but a couple things. You couldn't command your troops. Um, and they couldn't die, which kind of felt weird. A lot of times they just shot the enemy and didn't really do a whole lot. So it was almost like they were just set pieces themselves. Sure. Yeah, it does seem like they're more between the, the revive thing uh, and just how active they are within the battlefield. It does feel more like these AI companions are, you know, really involved with what's going on, which I like. What? I, you don't want me to shoot you, Kelly? <laughs> Oh, all right. If you insist. Yeah. Now, I haven't tried, but I wonder if you can down your opponents. Or not, or your teammates. Huh. <laughs> she does sort of dodge out of the way pretty fast. Yeah. I don't think it's going to let yeah. me do that. We all know in uh, typical Halo fashion, if you kill a fellow Marine, they'll all turn on you. Yeah. And somehow get, like... Massive firepower that they didn't have before, and they kill you in about two seconds. <clears throat> Sorry. Boom. <laughs> All right. Thank God for uh, vents. Feel a little sneaky, sneaky. Yeah. And they reward you with a little ammo. Yeah. Get those jackals out of here. Oh. <laughs> uh, time for a little recover. I mean, look how fast those shields recover. Yeah. There, there is such an implication of, like, we want the player to feel like this unstoppable force of motion. Oh, apparently not. <laughs> well, but even then, right, like, the idea is that... Look, I mean, I'm back up. Yeah. Right? Like, there's very little penalty for being aggressive mm -hmm. and... And being Rambo, they gave you like a little overshield too, a temporary little yep. boost. <clears throat> Definitely. Also, uh, talking about the shield recharging, they did implement a system. I don't know if it's it's probably in the campaign as well as multiplayer. But if you sprint, your shield will not regenerate. Uh, to me, it's kind of that's actually a really interesting idea to it's, you know to promote people not running from battle but staying put. Ooh. <laughs> This is bad news. Yeah, it is. Surrendering Argent Moon is not an option. Neither is fighting half the Covenant. Got some new ship designs. Then forget about reaching central control. Plan changes to asset denial. We scuttle the Argent Moon. Ship's reactor core is near here. Asset denial. Perpetual devotion. We overload the reactor and evac. Ship explodes, destroying any ships near. Yeah, it's pretty common tactic in Halo. Yeah. Destroy no this. When in doubt, explode the thing you're on. Yep. When in doubt, blow the core. I think that happens in every Halo game. Uh, I can't remember. Why did they come here? Uh, th this is like an Oni facility that they're on a mission to kind of like go uh -oh. investigate. Oh, check that out. Those a aren't good. about what we're going to be seeing up ahead. I love that. That's so cool. Uh, Halo Nightfall was a really fun look at... Uh, the hunter worms and like yeah. what they can do absolutely if they're so, not in yep so for people who don't don't understand this these the big hunter guys contrary to popular belief are not like a big monster they're a like a collection of of worms mm -hmm. they're all tied together into kind of this weird uh mass organism right right really fun idea for a for a, a like an enemy type <clears throat> and uh and yeah nightfall was a I thought it was really clever with how they approached hunters, you know. Uh, the dodge comes in real handy yeah, with does. the hunter fight. <laughs> Although trying to get behind these guys is going to be a trick. Uh, Got some stickies. Because as always, 
Yeah. Oh, it didn't stick to him. It kind of just fell off. I know. I'm going to try to get Linda, Linda needs before help. I die. Oh, oh, no. All right. So you could, I think we're going to die here. Up to Fred. We'll see if Fred gets me up before he can get smashed. Oh, yeah. Um, but, I mean, that was very close to a wipe. And, and to kind of show off, you, you, <laughs> it can't happen, right? Mm -hmm. um, you're not guaranteed... I like that we're bringing terms like wipe into Halo now. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, it's kind of true. It's, it's what it is. Schematics show a path to the reactor from here. These look, guys are not quite as uh, easy to manipulate as they were in Halo 1. Uh, not so much. And they take a lot of damage. And uh, their fuel rod cannons, are, it looks like they're a little quicker, too, in, in their fire rate. They are. Yeah, and they, they, they just come at you faster. You know what, uh, when Ford and Tadon came out, it ends in this really climactic battle between Chief and a hunter. Do you remember that where he uh, he assassinates it from behind, basically? He sticks a grenade in it and does a backflip yeah, yeah. off? I was really hoping that was like a hint that we were going to see that in Halo 4, but maybe that'll be too easy. Uh-oh, Kelly's like down, down. Oh, no. Kelly. I've never seen that happen before, actually. I'm kind of You curious. are losing your teammates, Miller. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Get his attention. Oh, you got your shotgun. That's going to be good against him. Linda needs help. She's going to die. This may be bad. Ooh, you got it. Yeah. All right, looks like your Spartans are back. Yeah, everybody's back alive. <laughs> Course open. So yeah. Anyway, you'd ask what's going on here. We're this is like this Oni station that we were trying to reclaim, but now there's all these covenants showing up, and so we're gonna just blow it up. Classic Master Chief maneuver. Mm -hmm. When in doubt, blow things up. Yeah. I should probably try to find another weapon, huh? Um. For once, there's not a billion weapons on the ground, mm. so. Yeah, I think. This way, there'll be something. I remember here. that being the case in Halo Four, where they give you a bunch of weapons at the beginning, and then they slowly kind of. Uh, no take that away. Right, let's go. I love that move. Yeah. You won't find out. Yeah. <laughs> Hulk smash. Eliminate the Covenant forces and get to those controls. Did he just say regroup attack Sang Helios? That's not good. That uh, Sanghelius is the elite homeworld, as some of you may know. And if you've seen other Halo, um, Halo 5 videos, like the E3 trailer, or the E3 demo, it shows you a huge battle taking place there. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that part of the campaign. Hey, buddy. Hey. Oh, and you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Just run away from me. So these are uh, these are jackals. They look like they're like they have some sort of exosuit on. I may be getting a little bit far ahead of my team right now. Ah, uh, you're fine. Where are they? Oh, they're okay. I'm they're like right. way back there. There they go. Oh, there. Yeah, they're they in moved the, up. They're in battle now. These guys the are shotgun just can really wreck things. Oh, taken from behind. Yeah. We haven't I, seen too many uh, assassinations. You just try and do a couple of those. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, I'll see what I can do. It's hard when they're they're in active engagement with you. Hey, just, you know, if it's facing away from you. Yes, if it's facing away. Usually, they t like, when they're actively engaged in battle, it's hard to get them to, like, yeah. face you. I did get a few of the grunts in the corridor back there. You did. And uh, we haven't seen too many turrets, but if we do, you can command your, your whatever teammate to go on there. Oh, right there. Oops. 
Setting up a perimeter? Sure. That's what I was doing. <laughs> Not just randomly hitting buttons. No. Okay. What it? I love how you can just like put your hand on a thing and the whole ship is going to blow up. <laughs> yep. Security protocols were much, much uh, more lax back in those days. <laughs> back in those days. Ahead in those days. 26th century. Yeah. We can stop that. Oh, they just <laughs> they just said they had good safety protocols. Never mind. I I also like uh this this is a, another play from Master Chief Classic Playbook, which is like when in doubt, choose the plan that is the most insane. <laughs> yep. No, let's just get on the, the giant reactor. And you know, try shooting your way out. Mix right. things up a little. Ride it down. Well, you won't see that either, apparently. <laughs> hey, Fred. How do the guns feel uh, compared to how they used to play in other Halos? I think that... Uh, oh, this is going to be cool. I see some fun stuff Ooh. over there. Um, I think that some of them seem familiar and some of them feel different. Uh, but in every case, it feels like they have gone back and tried to um, tried to just kind of tweak things, right? Yeah. Make them feel a little bit uh, like it's something new, whether it's like the sound of them or uh, or the look of them. There's something that's always a little bit different. Yeah. Let's hop in this guy right Get here and see that. what happens. So this looks like an all new design of the Banshee. Uh, 343 addressed this redesign in one of their recent episodes of Cannon Fodder on Halo Waypoint. Pretty similar to the to the uh, typical design, but some tweaks. How does the assault rifle feel? Good. S same old. Uh, again, it, it, uh, nothing feels the same old. And a lot of that, I think, comes from the, the way that movement feels more streamlined, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is, is kind of just a little bit oh. easier to handle Yeah. Um, in general. And of course, you did have to ditch the assault rifle pretty early on. I love how Chief never brings any extra ammo with him. Yeah. Like, soldiers these days bring, like, you know, a bunch of rounds with, but not not Chief. He, he expects to find guns he does. in the field. <laughs> Well, and, and we talked about that a little bit earlier, that, like, there is the idea um, to get that, that sense of frenetic motion. You, they actually, I think, encourage that, right? They put right. a lot of different weapons on the ground at any one time so that you... Um, oh, looks like you got to do some stuff. Yeah, right? I'm going to actually get out here. Just in time. I think you got EMP'd. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, do what you gotta do. You do what you gotta do. Uh, you, there's you, a fuel rod cannon right next you to don't, you. You don't get to uh, to land a uh, uh, a banshee gently, do you? <laughs> nope, it pretty much just crashes. Yeah. I'll just go in here. Bust through there. Yeah. I'd love the manual override. Another typical <laughs> Halo fashion. When in doubt, punch. Yep. <laughs> I have no ammo. I mean, I don't think you can make a Halo game without a manual override uh, portion of it. Eliminate the targets, blue team. Grab banshees. We can target the tribes more easily from the air. They are not as been alerted to our presence. Reinforcements inbound. They're sending. I mean, just think how boring that would be if there was a Halo without a manual override. Yeah. I'm flying away. I'm gonna detonate remotely. It worked perfectly. The end. <laughs> wow, that's a lot Stop of things you gotta do. Shooting at me. And then it's. I think is it Y to switch to your your green cannon? Yeah. Look, it looks like it's a little heat seeking. Love that classic Halo theme. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. That's your own guy. That's Fred. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Fred. <laughs> Just testing. I got a Just phantom. making sure you're paying attention. Yep. Yeah. And then how do you roll with this? LB. LB. 
I think that's been that way for a while. Linda, you deserve it if I shot you. <laughs> she tried to ram me before. Yes, she did. Okay, let's see what we got. We got to blow up some stuff here. <clears throat> yeah, blow up the vent. Nice. Whoa, watch out. Nope, that was a miss. Man, of all the ships that flew in, they're not trying very hard to take you out, are they? <laughs> well, not on normal anyway. That's true. So many vents. So many vents. Keep firing on those coolant pipes. Oh, you're getting fancy on me. Yep. <laughs> I'm just jamming out to this music. That's pretty fun. Oh! <laughs> I'm just, I just like picturing the engineer. We need 13 vents in this room <laughs> or else nothing works. Looks like you have a little bit more control over the speed of the Banshee. A lot of times they go so fast you have to make multiple passes at something. Yeah. But now it goes at a nice slow pace. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Kelly. <laughs> Call it in. No signal on autopilot retrieval. Armada must have taken it out. Does that mean you have to do it manually? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go prowler. take a prowler, sweet. Let's do it. And then left trigger to I'm gonna boost. have a, a yeah, l perfectly uh, smooth landing here. Ooh. How'd not, you like that? Not bad. <laughs> through an I love the the physics of a banshee once you get out of it, just kinda flops around. Yeah, it does. Do not have the ideal weapon loadout for running forward right now, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'm sure you'll pick up something. Did they leave? Oh, so you left them behind. I don't need those guys. <laughs> yeah, come on, guys. Get your up. asses up. Make it happen faster. There's there the it is. More covenant. <clears throat> That's cool. Yeah, that is cool. You wouldn't? I don't see why not. Okay. Can you bust through that door? There you go. Do some busting. <laughs> Grunt, don't have your back to an open door. You know better. Ooh, the Pick rail gun. Rail gun. That's a cool weapon. One oh, of the... I think I got that. I think I got that grunt. Wait. I didn't. You did. <laughs> <laughs> So that's cool. So one of the one of the interesting things about the railgun, I liked that a lot in Halo 4, but you couldn't it had no scope in. And now it does, which is great. Because it's a it's a useful gun. Marking the power's control panel. No, you're not. <laughs> okay. Oh, another no, interesting hey, thing. Kelly. It, uh, all the weapons and points of interest kind of light up on your, from your HUD as you pass by them. Uh, very reminiscent of ODST. Mm -hmm. Although I do wish you could toggle it on and off because sometimes it's nice to not have that always shining in your peripherals. <clears throat> Maybe there is. I should check. Launch control. That seems like a thing we would want. Yeah, get on that. Launch controls are here. Punch it. <laughs> they went in doubt. Hold off the covenant while the prowler preps for launch. Ooh. Linda took a sword to the chest and is okay. Oh, no, she's not. No, she's not. We gotta go get her. Yeah. I do like the uh, party banner. I think they've done a good job of, of oh, having yeah. a good bit of variety and communicating about... Uh, those girls just fell on top of each other. <laughs> they were like Goombas. Oh, no. Oh, sticky. Not... Yeah, no, I... Oh, rocket launcher. Yeah, 
Yes, that will be good. Uh, I totally agree. When I the first game that I noticed that had that was Battlefield Three, and it was just a nice little touch to get some, you know. Uh, idea of where your teammates were, what they were, what kind of fire they were under, some positive reinforcement if you get a headshot, yeah. stuff like that's kind of cool. And while it's not actual people saying that to you, it's it's still nice. Well, it just gives a greater sense of immersion, right? That's yeah. what you want. Yeah, for sure. That, that idea. That and you get that in multiplayer as well. If someone throws a grenade and it's right next to you, they like you know, they let you know. Sorry, Fred. <laughs> this kind, of, this kind of makes me wonder if you need to be a Spartan to use these weapons effectively. Like, if you were just a Marine holding that BR, you wouldn't see those little heads-up thing when you scope in. They are super soldiers. All right, we got to get down there and deal with those Yeah, hunters. we got to take these guys out. Probably fall in a hole. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Get right. down there. Blue team on my target. Copy. Oof. Copy. I bet you can assassinate him. I bet you can do it. The hunter? Yeah. You could totally assassinate him. Alright, I'll give it a try. If, want, if my guys ever get Ooh. down here. Or you should try and ground pound him. That might be fun. This is your fault, Wade. Hey, you're your fine. Fault. You're fine. You got three other Spartans. They'll help you out. I hope. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you guys are good. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, and who told you to get so close? What a bad idea. Know. That was a really, really terrible idea. Oh, no. Oh, no. You're going to wipe. I am going to wipe. <laughs> no, you're not. Linda's got this. All right, now get out of there. All right, let's do this the real way. Yeah. Let's <laughs> pick him off at a distance. Oh, you know what? You probably just should have, like, did the little sidestep thing, the little thruster pack to get out of the way. Uh, that's what I should have done? Yeah. Uh, hindsight's twenty twenty, I guess. It is. It would have worked perfectly. I'm sure of it. There's one. <laughs> Looks like we lost Frederick. Come on, Kelly. Oh, shit. Uh, nope. It was a trap. Where is he? Is he over? He's there? hiding right next to. There you go. <clears throat> okay. Oh, this guy's on his last leg. He really is. But we got more guys out now. But do you have an objective? We just gotta kill these guys. I think we just gotta kill these guys. Yeah. They're they're refueling right now. The prowlers refueling. Oh, that's inconvenient. It is. Shotgun. It's interesting, this is the first Halo where we have an all new rocket launcher design. Up till now we've had the you know, the very iconic two barrel uh, design. Yeah, whatever. Goodbye. Alright. Did we get the hunter? Is he still down? No, here? he's still walking around where is somewhere. He? Uh I think he went up a level now. Uh, we'll find him eventually. We'll just kill some guys until we do. Oh, taken out by a plasma pistol. How embarrassing. It really is. You are... No honor in that Yeah, deck. no no honor. Oh, that guy's looking like trouble. Yep. Goodbye. Oh, maybe the hunter is gone. Yeah, I guess... All right, it's free fueled. Is ready. Board now, blue team. Excellent. Yeah. Time, Linda. Eighty-nine seconds. I sense a uh, a turning point coming here. Shh. I haven't seen this yet. Sierra one one seven to infinity. Argent moon scuttled. I've reassigned blue team. Destination Meridian. Potential contact from Cortana. Negative one one seven. Another team is already being prepped to deal with her. What the hell? Really? Return to infinity immediately. Negative infinity. <laughs> oh, snap. 
whoever they are. Let's get to Meridian before they do. Kelly, no. No need to do this by yourself, Chief. Get out of there! <laughs> Just gonna hang out. Just watch the ship explode around us. Now, when they say we're sending another team to deal with her, they mean Meridian or Cortana. It it does. And, you you get the idea that Master Chief senses something's not yeah. quite right. Because how would they know about Chief's hallucinations unless Cortana is like a ghost in the machine affecting all sorts of things on the infinity. I love that, like, he makes that decision instantaneously. Yeah, too, like, right? listen, I'm going to just not listen to the I'm, see anymore. I'm, I'm going to, yeah, basically mutiny and potentially get court-martialed just instantaneously. Court-martialed or hunted down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So that's interesting. So that's why he goes AWOL. And we got a little stealth ship. Yep. We're gonna sneak away. This was happening. Cortana is no longer an asset, Captain. She is a danger. She has access to the Forerunner domain, a galaxy spanning network. Cortana's alive. allows her to control whatever device is caused to this damage. How is she? The Master Chief believes she contacted him. What? No. John must not speak to her. He's gone in search of her. You let him go? How is Nobody it? Nobody lets the Chief do anything. He does what he wants. And until 0631 this morning. When he was declared absent without leave. This isn't about the Master John Chief. John is not equipped emotionally to deal with her as a threat. Hey! Is anyone going to answer me? You're out of line, Roland. Yes, sir. But so is everyone else. You created Cortana, Doc. And now you're throwing her out the airlock with these accusations. Roland. You think she tricked the Master Chief into abandoning his post? Respectfully, sir, to what end? Why is Cortana the problem? Because she refused to die when she was supposed to? Ooh, interesting perspective from another smart AI. Yeah, these guys have very short lifespans. About seven years know. before they uh, denigrate into rampancy. Yep. But if Cortana's still alive, there is the implication that okay? somehow she has overcome that issue. Because mm -hmm. she was dealing with rampancy throughout Halo 4 yeah. before her death. Target, Buck. No doubt uh, yeah. because of the contact she had with the Forerunner technology. This is a cool interaction. Uh, dealing about these soldiers who are now going to have to hunt down Master Chief, who see Master Chief as like their greatest hero. No. <laughs> Armor lock. Armor restraint. Short circuit their suit systems. Also known as an armor ability from Halo Reach. Yeah. The lock. Every other Spartan, every soldier, when they hear about this, they're gonna hate us. You know that, right? They're not gonna hear about it. This is a special op. You're not the only one here because of him. Man, those cutscenes are so cool. <laughs> they are good. <laughs> so we can get a taste of just a little bit more here. Yeah, this is the final level the, we'll show off. You see some of uh, level three here uh, before we gotta gotta call it quits. But this is a colony world meridian, kind of in the the far end of the galaxy mm -hmm. uh, that humanity has colonized. And we're in an orbital elevator, it looks like. Is this a pre-Covenant War colony or post? I'm guessing... Well, they're talking about oh. it here, right? Okay. Oh, okay. Thanks. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, like, the co the colony got, got, uh, glass. got glassed. That's such a cool view. Yeah. Oh, they're in a gravity lift. Or a, a uh, orbital, orbital elevator. elevator. Yep. Oh, that's awesome. Those are Forerunner ships. What the hell are Forerunners doing here? Maybe we're not the only ones here for the Master Chief. Whoever the hell is on my elevator, identify yourself. <laughs> this is Spartan Jameson Locke, UNSC. Uh, a lot of you. To whom am I speaking? 
Atlas is Governor Sloan, and you be the... Governor didn't seem to want our help. Well, he's gonna get it anyway. Hmm. Look at this guy. What the hell are Spartans? Looks like somebody I should murder. Meridian stations under attack. Sloan's trying to put up a guy from Borderlands. Yeah. They ain't on. Osiris, the people of Meridian Station need our assistance. What the hell are those things? Has anyone heard from Energy Station? Oh, this is cool. Governor Sloan's on top of the situation. Little ambient storytelling going on here. Yep. We need you to open the doors to the space elevator. But it's overrun! Open the door <laughs> so we can help. Damn it, Kyle! Do it! I Damn it, man! I'm a doctor! <laughs> <laughs> Something's backing up. Pace is on lockdown. No way out. There must be a way to show Oh, that's a cool environment. Look at that. I know. So this is the first time that we've set foot on a glass planet in Halo in the games. Yeah. Yeah, basically, this is what the co this is how the Covenant sort of wiped out many of the colony worlds. They yeah. just put a bunch of big ships in orbit and shot so many, so much firepower and heat down onto the planet that the whole surface got turned to mm -hmm. glass. Not as elegant as a Death Star, but it's still pretty cool. Still and deadly. Still does its job. Yeah. Uh, and this colony, as they were just sort of explaining, basically is kind of here digging out the planet. Mm-hmm. Uh, mining down into its surface yeah because i mean presumably only the surface itself has been glass the rest of it is still as it was maybe a molten core a nice you know some stuff to mine yeah nice minerals um there's also an episode on the first season of hunt the truth that took place on a glass planet that was really interesting i don't know if you listen to that miller mm -mm. Did you listen to any Hunt the Truth? Mm -mm. Okay, so uh, Ben Jero, in season one, the, the journalist was looking for what happened, like what Oni did to the Master Chief when he was young. It was his big cover-up about how sure. they kidnapped kids. And so he went to the, a glass planet, a glass colony, to find, find answers. And it was kind of a cool scenario. Cool. Mount that turret. Yeah. It's kind of cool. So, I like how they they brought in Forerunner or Promethean soldiers as this like mid-level enemy and it, reserved knights as this kind of. I agree. It, it it feels like something that was needed. Oh yeah. Uh, within the Promethean group of enemies, is to have this just like a standard, like here's an enemy that's gonna shoot at you. Yeah. I I, I remember when they were pulling Halo Four together and we did a bunch of coverage in advance of that game's launch. There was the sense of it. It seemed like they wanted. The Prometheans to feel really distinct, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that might have been behind why there wasn't a more kind of standard enemy. Um, right. Yeah, and you know, I, I really enjoyed the knight and uh, watcher combo. I think that was really effective. But a lot of times, it was just really hard to get through. Yeah. Uh, and there was just multiple um, walls of them essentially in a level. And this is a nice little warm up, I think, to that. <clears throat> And you know, one thing I will say about this game, visually, is that it's uh, it it looks so remarkable, but there's so much sort of bright light and flashing and mm -hmm. sort of neon effects. Oh yeah. That I I can foresee that there may be people who it'll be sort of visually exhausting to. Yeah. Um. I and and you know I, th I think the the soundtrack and the sound effects themselves are kind of. In a way, similar yeah. uh, to that, they're they're very upfront. They're very punchy and right right in the front. Absolutely, Halo Four established a certain um, uh, a certain sort of priority on its sound design and mm -hmm. making that kind of incredibly punchy, in your face sort of There's feel. Um, but it's certainly not something that's easy to ignore. Um, yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, right away in Halo 4, people noticed the weapon sounds, which I think, yeah, have a lot more presence than they previously did. However, a lot of the bleeps and bloops and, like, the shield, you know, bleep yeah. is just, like, right there. Right. Was that your doing? 
Your people did a lot. Uh, sort of. Yeah, I mean... That feels like a little bit of politics uh, Another there. Another staple of the Halo universe, the, the ineffective uh, soldiers that fight see? alongside you. All right. Come on, guys. So what, <laughs> when I first saw this new design of the Warthog in Halo 4, I thought gas cans, really, in the back? But I guess that's the certain type of, like, hydrogen fuel it uses. Uh-oh. Ooh, being chased by a Phaeton. Pelicans aren't super effective against smaller ships, are they? No. <laughs> I constantly see them going down. That's really what they're best at, yeah, they're, isn't they're, it? Is to go down. They, they are so good at going. They're like U-boats in Normandy, the yeah. Normandy invasion. <laughs> they're really good at holding a lot of soldiers and crashing. <laughs> No way. Not a lot you can do to stop that. Oh man, if only you could drive those big vehicles. Yeah, <laughs> right? Well, is Buck just literally driving around <laughs> on a four-wheeler right now? That's all he's doing for us? Well, actually, is it is it a typical mongoose? They might have guns on the front. Something they introduced in the Master Chief Collection was the Gun Goose. Yeah. It has a uh, twin, twin cannon machine gun on the front. Is fire. Looks like they sound. They changed the sound of the Warthog a little bit, so it doesn't have that annoying whine it did in, in Halo 4. Yeah. Nothing like getting a nice splatter in a warthog. I know, right? He sounds like a, like an insurrectionist almost. Not like in the UNSC. There's some guns. Propaganda about the Spartans. Yeah, the gun goose. I like my warthog. Oh, going on there we go. <laughs> there we go. All right. I'm pretty sure you you can use the same uh, command for your team to like tell someone to drive it. Yeah. <laughs> Soldiers can drive. Oh, he was talking about the Prometheans. Yes. I thought he was talking about the other Halo AI. Wow, they're. Wow. They're straight up using. Yeah, I, I, we've never seen that before. I don't think in Halo. Nope. It's the enemy using a warthog like you do. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Why do they have a tank? Give to us, Vale. I'm taking Halo. Can't have Halo without a good Scorpion level. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't quite splatter him. No, they don't like that. Uh, wow, is the front of that Gatling gun turning into molten lead or something? Look yeah, at that. it gets really hot. You can run a jeep off of. Like hydrogen fuel, but you can't keep a Gatling gun from overheating. Head over to the garage. I'll have Billy open up. Spartans. Open up, Billy. Billy, they're gonna need to borrow your toy. What? <laughs> They'll get more use out of it than you will. Arrow's clear. Meridian station just up the hill. Whoa. Whoa. Those knights are trouble. Oh, I got some get sentries. Those. Get the sentries. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, you can Mark tell them what to shoot at. It's nice that you can do that even when you're driving yeah, the Warthog. Yeah, for sure. I wonder if you have a passenger in your front, if you can... <laughs> if you can uh, command them, too. Hey, you're not doing what I tell you to do. Blow that thing up. Yeah. You're going rogue. Ow. There we go. Tanaka. <laughs> You're my way. Oh. Yes, please. There it is. 
got a nice decal on it. So if we're not looking the UNSC, they certainly do have a lot of standard issue UNSC vehicles. Uh-huh. <laughs> Raises a couple questions. I could have killed most everything. Yeah, do you have to kill. go through that door? Or do you have to go up to the top of the hill? Let's out of the hop out and see what happens. Move, double tie. Wherever you gotta go, it should probably be with the tank, I'm guessing. Take that position. Gotcha. Hmm. I think I you gotta go up, to go up yeah, that you way. Yeah, gotta go up the hill. No fall damage. That's good. Yes. <laughs> I love how Halo kind of goes back and forth on the fall damage. It really struggles to like, figure like, out yes, where it wants no, to Yes, no, yes, no. I think it was like they had fall damage in Halo 2, but not in Halo 3, and it was back in Reach. I want to. I want to hear the official like apologetic uh, canon reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, well, the armor was designed for this. Ooh, a little molten volcano coming out there. <clears throat> so we'll get to see how just how easy it is to blow up a scorpion. How well it holds up. It's not quite the same without a bunch of marines sitting on the sides and one yeah. turret. I'm assuming you can't operate the machine gun at the same time. Just just the cannon. Uh, let's see. I'm trying all the different buttons here. Yeah, I think the machine gun is a secondary person. Yeah. <laughs> that shell ejection is cool. Yeah. <laughs> it just flies out. <laughs> yeah, you can run. Ooh, did that pelican just blink out of existence then back in? <laughs> Seemed like a bad idea. That oh, it's jumping. Yeah. Into slip space. Yeah. Surely not. Okay. Well, I hope it was worth bringing this tank all the way up here. I know. Come on. Let's see some vehicle combat. This guy's pretty demanding. Oh, they just warped in out of nowhere. Oh, they can do that. They're Prometheans. <laughs> They're cool like that. They're cooler than we are. Yeah. Nope. Not quite. Here they come. I sense a hold the line moment. Yep. Oh, what is that? There's like something crawling up over the wall. Did you see that? Yeah, maybe that's just like the Promethean kind of trying to make its way up the wall. I'm not sure. I wonder if this means they're going to bring in some Promethean land vehicles. That'd be cool. Oh, looks like that was just a windmill I saw. <laughs> oh. Never mind. These guys are not a match for what I'm bringing against No, no, I think this is uh, excessive force. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh no. He's trouble. Got someone who is up on there sniping. He's a good guy, right? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big soldiers are the area. I have a feeling we're coming up here on uh, pretty close to the end yeah. of uh, what we want to look at. We'll finish this little uh, this action here so before it moves on into. Uh, the next sequence, but I'll tell you, there's a lot of things that I'm still curious about related to this game. Things that oh, we're yeah. going to be covering a lot, both in other videos and in our review. We're not able to see multiplayer today. Right, that's not um, going to be up for a little while. Not up and running yet, or it is up and running. The servers just uh, don't seem to be running yet. Yeah. Um, and uh, we haven't seen the the new Forge stuff that they been talking about, right? Though, yeah. Apparently, it's the biggest Forge map by a huge margin. Yeah. 
Um, and for me, one of the big deals, I mean, for people who play a lot of Halo, there's a lot to be said about like the different difficulties, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something we just don't know about yet. We've been playing normal here to show off both for the ease of, of making our way through the video, but also to show off kind of the, the, the speed that the game moves at now. Um, but I think I'll be really interested to see what, oh, poor Vale. Uh, <laughs> I just oh. ran over her body. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll be really interested to see uh, how heroic and legendary play. Um, So yeah. it should be cool. Yeah, it looks great so far. I'm really excited to play through this. Um, and, you know, have been a huge fan of the beta. I'm, I'm super pumped for the multiplayer. Can't wait for that. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, we're going to call it quits here. Um, but uh, keep an eye out for, for Halo 5 here in the coming weeks. It's going to be, looks like uh, the extra time has been worth it. This game is pretty rad so far. Oh, yeah. We'll see you later.